Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do One Piece Chapter 711 review. Before I get started with the chapter itself, because, yo, the ending of this week's chapter of One Piece, oh, yo, the ending of this week's chapter of One Piece, Flamingo. This one, yo. Uh, all I can say, I mean, I'll get in more detail later, obviously. But all I can say for right now is Law got too cocky. He got too cocky. Fuck. Yay. But first of all, no chapter of One Piece next week. And that makes sense to me, honestly, because I was told... That Ichiro Oda, even though he just got an operation for his tonsillitis, uh, he was actually writing manga chapters while he was inside the hospital bed. I'm like, bro, you're like, no, like you're no, like he, like 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 J C was telling me how he's like the complete inverse of fucking uh, Togashi, and that's true because Togashi takes he takes like three year long breaks, and Oda is he's writing chapters in hospital beds it's like dude take, take, take it easy so when i read the chapter this week and then at the end it said you know like well one piece will be on break next week that makes sense to me perfectly that, that makes honestly god sense so that's number one the next thing number two is that i gotta give a shout out to a person named uh iv triple seven g all right iv seven 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 g right and this individual sent me a pm and the pm he explains or he, he or she explains how, basically, in the, back in the Shiboni Archipelago arc, specifically, and I'll put a page, I'll, I'll put a picture as soon as I'm done explaining this, right? Specifically, chapter 501, page 6, on the list of the auctions off in the human shop. There's a list of species in the One Piece world. So right here, you'll see a picture. Bam, right here, picture. And on the list, you can see here that dwarves are on the list beneath humans. Okay, and right there, it says human trading. And then it says standard auction and starting prices. Humans for 500,000 belly. Then dwarves underneath them at 700,000. Then comes ones that I don't even like. Mikmen. Which I've not been explained yet. So that's a new species that Oda has yet to, to, to introduce. Minkman. Of course, we all know about the long arm and the long legs. Then snake necks. Like, what the? S snake necks. So, I don't know what that means. I don't know. Like, the, um, uh, uh, like, like, what are they called? Um, I think they're called, uh, like, like those half snake, half. Human people, uh, like not the like like not the like not Hancock sisters. Like they actually deal with fruits. I mean, like there's an actual like Greek creature, like ah uh, oh, crap, Jesus, like a like a lamia, some of that nature. Like they're like half humans, half snakes. I mean, maybe those are the snake necks. I I, I don't know, but minkmen and snake necks are species that Oda has yet to introduce. However, however. You don't see toys, do you? So, that's intriguing. You don't see toys in that list. So, I'm beginning to wonder if these toys are actually, like, you know, like a, a, a species, or if not, someone created them. Or maybe they're actually, or maybe they're humans who are trapped inside toy bodies. Like, I, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm starting to believe that, the, I'm starting to believe that these toys aren't exactly, uh... In, like natural in the uh, world of One Piece, dwarves apparently are, and they consider humans giants. At least in this particular tribe, the uh, Tontata tribe. So I mean, imagine if they actually like real giants. They'd be like, "Holy shit!" Like, whoa! Like if they saw dudes like uh, oars, like, Ugh. like what the fuck? Like they look like goddamn titans, like literally, like just colossal motherfuckers in their perspective. Um, like living continents in their perspective, you know, like it'd be crazy. But basically, that's that's very key because it it shows you just how frightening Oda's foreshadowing is. Like seriously, it's like, like this guy 
Back in chapter 501, back in chapter 501, he foreshadowed dwarfs. And lo and behold, this is chapter 577, no, 711, dwarfs, bam. And I'm like, yo, this motherfucker. So, let's get on to the chapter itself, right? The chapter itself has a very nice ending, and that's obvious, okay? But beforehand, we get like a, we, basically, it's all about the dwarves. Prehand, and, and uh, there's a, a little scene here where we see uh, Re Re Rebecca and Frankie, right? And from the announcement, we can hear that Block C is starting real soon. But it appears that, number one, the dwarves, at least in this, in, in this particular tribe, the Tontara tribe, they have actually uh, knocked out Robin and Usopp. And Robin, she, she's just waking up. And then she's being, like, frisked down by these miniature dudes and their dwarves and they live underneath green bay uh in this totata village and basically like when robin called on the dwarves of course using her power um like these dwarves did some like they used some anesthetic flower where they knocked both robin and usopp out and according to the dwarves like anyone who sees them like they can't leave and but however they're actually like surprisingly very, very easily influenced. Like Robin says, I'm actually a good person. They're like, oh, really? Okay, well, then you're cool. Right? Like, you know, like, you, you good. Uh, in fact, even, like, the village elder, because, like, there's two dwarves that come in. Uh, one is Leo. He's, like, a, he's like a warrior dwarf, right? And the other one is just some old dude, uh, some old dwarf, uh, Gancho, I believe. And basically, it's like, okay, so Gancho and Leo, like, they both agree, like, okay, so, like, you're a good person, I right, fine. So, like, you can leave. Like, you're good to go. Just, you know, give us... A weapon in return because if you're if you're a good person then trade off and that's what the marines did like the, the marines what up happening is that like when the marines were surrounded by these voices that they couldn't hear and then the voices act well are you guys good people and then the voices and then the, like the marines they responded like yeah like we're marines we're here to like so we're here to protect people and the dwarf says okay well that's fine well give us so many weapons the the, the marine says no we have a mission and then they wind up taking all their clothes and the weapons too so Robin, who has no weapon to begin with, she was she was about to get stripped down, like literally, until all of a sudden, like some random dwarf came. Like I think his name was like Flappy. I, I don't know. Like that's some weird shit. Uh, he comes in there. He's like, no, like don't hurt her. Apparently, she's a Nakama, a friend of a hero who sent to help us. And that's straight up Usopp lies. Like we 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 all know it's, it's straight up Usopp bullshit. This guy spews bullshit. Like it's his job. Yeah, actually, in, in some cases, it's literally his job to just a lie. But, so that's what's going on with Robin and Usopp right now. And the thing about it is that Robin, it's like, it's almost time for the deal to go down between Flamingo and Law. At least in her, her knowledge. And she wants to get there and inform Law as quickly as she can. A little, a little funny scene here where she wants her Denden Mushi. And then the, the guy's like, yeah, we return it to the wild. And then the Denden Mushi just chilling, like, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm like, what the like, and is that? Is that pop? Like, like since when? Like, I, I didn't know they could do that shit. I mean, apparently, like, they just take off the fucking uh, thing on their back. And, like, because usually, usually there's, like, well, actually, I don't know, no, no. For the bigger ones, there's actually, like, a mic on their back of the shell. But... I mean, I guess, I guess, I don't know. It's, it's weird. Like, that threw me off. I'm like, wait, you can return these things to the wild? Like, like, I, I, I guess it makes sense. I don't, I don't fucking know what's going on. I'm like, oh, I'm like okay, all right, fuck it. I'll take it. Um, but that, that, that to me was about very comedic. The next thing, Zoro. Apparently, Zoro, he's with a dwarf now. His name is Wicca, right? And this dwarf is surprising in his own ways. But basically, he's the dwarf that wind up stealing uh, Zoro sword, and, uh, he's, a uh, you know, he's, a uh, uh, you know, like, the black, we all know, right, the black sword that he got from, uh, uh Kengo Ryoma, and basically, this dwarf, this dwarf, uh, Wicca, who's a part of the recon team, apparently, he's, like, a very clumsy dwarf, like, because, like, the dwarves that we've seen so far, they're actually pretty speedy motherfuckers, like, they're, yeah, they're pretty quick motherfuckers, and this one, apparently, is, like, I'm mean, quick, qu quick enough to actually get in and out of Dressrosa, Without being seen ever, being considered fairies, but this one is apparently clumsy and not really uh, good on the hand-eye coordination. Uh, he can't really do shit right. 
and on <laughs> some George Bush shit. And basically, he gets caught by Zoro. And then Zoro, he's like, yo, is this a fairy? And then he's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not a fairy. I'm Wicca of the Totata tribe, right? You know, and then he has to report an incident, apparently. And the incident involves, uh, apparently, like, he was reconning the Flamingo family. And apparently, the Flamingo family, this is a good opportunity, according to him, where he has to report back to the captain on the Quixote family whereabouts, where apparently it's confirmed that the, Don, that the Don Quixote family are on the way to attack the Straw Hat boat. So that's, you know, like, that's like, whoa, like, Zoro's like, whoa. And so when we saw on the Straw Hat boat, where, like, when the doors open or there was someone on the ship, that's Quixote member, man. That's a Quixote. That's a Don Quixote member. Some of the, somehow they snuck in. They got past, and I mean, I, I'm not saying, like, this is, like, the A squad, obviously, right? But they got past Nami, Momosuke, Chopper, and Soul King Brook. And they somehow got on the fucking ship, all right? Again, not really A team. Right? It's, 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 that's like F team. Right? <laughs> well, no, it's Brooke, so you know that's D team. But the thing about it is that they got the shit. So, and time has passed, so we don't know what's happened since they have maybe gone in the ship and trying to see who's there. But it's probably most likely Quixote member family, and that's you know that's a big deal. That's a big deal. And then. This this dwarf, Wicca, has a thing where he's always degrading himself. He's he, he's always saying, like, you know, like, I can't, like, you know, like, I'm, I'm like, you know, like, uh, I can't walk. I'm such a klutz. And he's always hitting the ground. And basically, when he hits the ground, it's like he, he actually has power, like, a significant amount of power. So he's hitting the ground, and the ground's splitting apart and cracking. And he does this to the point where the building next to him crumbles. I'm like... He's this fucking big. Like, what the hell is going on? He's like, you're in, I'm clutch. And, and the buildings are literally crumbling. And Zoro's like, yo, quit destroying shit. So, basically, Zoro's goal right now is to get to the Strahd boat. However, there's complications, meaning Zoro has no sense of fucking direction. Can't get to where he has to fucking be, motherfucker. So, of course, when Wicca says go up the stairs, he doesn't go up the stairs. So, it's going to take some time. For Zoro to get to the Straw Hat boat. Because right now, Zoro, I mean, well, not right, not right now. Probably forever. Zoro's direction, his sense of direction is just non existent. Uh, well, sometimes it's there on occasion. The next thing, and which is the last thing in the entire chapter, right? Actually, no, say the same last thing. There's a scene of Frankie and the Toy Soldier, and they're running. And and this is what uh, Wicked was, was talking about, too. Right now, they need to go to the flower fields, okay? Um, so, so maybe, no, no. So, let me, let me, let me take that back. Zoro's secondary goal, well, his primary goal, is to get the Strahd crew. However, in the case of Wicca, he, he needs to go to the flower fields. And I guess report to the commander, I'm not too sure. But, so does the toy soldier, apparently. I don't know why. I mean, maybe because that's where the factory is. The Kyoto, maybe that's where the Smiley factory is. I'm not too sure. But either way. Uh, the thing about it is that uh, when it comes to when it comes to the toy soldier, apparently he knows Rebecca. Okay, so they're passing by the Coliseum, so they're passing by the side of the Coliseum, and he's right on top of Frankie's back, and they're going to the flower fields. Re Rebecca sees those two. She yells out, you know, so a toy soldier stat, and then she's like, "I'm here in the competition. I'm going to win." And then after when like let's live like let's live together like you know and then, and then she's crying, and then the soldier says, well you know, uh, someone who is someone who easily cries isn't gonna win this tournament, and then Frankie and him continue on, but there's a connection here between him and Rebecca, and we don't know what it is exactly, but I mean there's something obviously there like some deep connection, so that leads you, that leads you to believe. That Rebecca may not... I mean, people have been saying that she's going to join the crew. If there's a connection between this toy soldier and her, then... And she wants to live together with, with this toy soldier, then... Maybe... Maybe not. Maybe she ain't going to join the crew. I mean, I'm not saying that... Who knows? Fuck it. Alright, we'll, we'll just wait and see. We'll just wait and goddamn see. Okay? 
And then finally, the last part of the chapter, where Law is chilling there with Caesar Clown. He gets a Den Den Mushi call from Sanji. I don't know how Sanji knew, but he found out at some point. All right, my boy Sanji, right? Sanji informing Law about, yeah, yo, get the fuck off the island, quick. And basically, it's like, okay, so it's two minutes to go, and then Sanji calls in Law. And then basically, Sanji tells him to, Sanji tells him to get the fuck out. And then he tells him, Flamingo never stepped down as Shichibukai. He's been playing us from the beginning. He's been playing us from the beginning, man. And he says, even if you give back Caesar Clown, he never had any intentions of living up to the deal. And Sanji's like, Law, get the fuck out, get out of there, man, leave. And all of a sudden, you see Flamingo doing a sky thing, like, yeah, he's coming in, yeah. And then right behind him, Right behind him. Well, not right behind him exactly. But then we get another panel. Fuji, Tora, and the boys. I'm like, oh, fuck. And they're all coming towards Green Bit right now. They're all coming to the southeastern shore of Green Bit. Quixote and Fuji, Tora, and the Marines. And Law's like, fuck. And that's your chapter ends. And you're like, fuck. Law, Law, what are you? <laughs> Law has to get the fuck out. All right. He has, to, he, has to, he has to get the fuck out. Because he was fooled. He was tricked. All right? We, uh, the entire world was... And that's the reason why. The island of Dress Rosa, when they went there, everybody was so calm, cool, and collected. Because even though news worldwide broke out, or at least according to what we know so far, news worldwide broke out that Quixote stepped down as Shichibukai. In actuality... The people of his country knew that he never did. That was a facade. He played possum. He played... He played the wolf in sheep's clothing. And now he's coming out of the actual clothing. Now he's coming out of the sheep. And the wolf is ready to strike. Like, yeah. He's ready to go for the jugular, man. He's coming. Like, yeah. Yeah, Sky Demon. He's coming. Flamingo. God damn. And now that makes it, So now think about it. Think about all the adversaries who are on this island right now. Quixote family. Don Quixote, Don Flamingo himself. And these are the known adversaries, right? Fuji Tora and the Marines. CP0. They're all here. To take out the Straw Hat Law Alliance. They're all here to take out the Straw Hat Law Alliance. <sighs> like, I thought that it was going to be a three-way. Between the Quixote family versus Marines versus Straw Hat Law Alliance. No. Fuck that. It was Quixote and the boys plus Marines. Plus CB0 versus Law's Straw Hat Alliance. Versus the Heart Straw Hat Alliance. Fuck. Fuck! Oh! So that ended up on a really, really, really I know. So the chapter overall is the good chapter. This is the good chapter of One Piece, man. This is a good chapter, right? Everything from that point before, I'm not going to say it was slow paced, but I did feel like the dwarf thing was somewhat. I mean, it's not irrelevant, but I wasn't really into it. You feel me? Like, I was really, like, into, into it. It's cool, it's intriguing, but I wasn't really fully into it. And when it came to the law reveal, like when, 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 when it came to the Quixote reveal, where it's like, no, no, he never stood down as Shichibukai. Oh, so because of the ending, the chapter gets a good rating. So I'm done killing. Be sure, of course, rate, comment, and subscribe as always. Peace. Have a nice day.